let's come up with the formula that would produce this graph. So looking at this graph, it looks to either be the graph of a sine function or a cosine function. And remember, these are kind of the same graph, just transposed, like moved around uh, using transformations. The sine graph in general, if it's a basic nice sine graph, has this kind of look to it. It starts at the origin, goes up, comes down, and then kind of ends back at the origin. Whereas the cosine graph, if I want to use that one, think of it as starting up here. Normally it's at one, comes down, and then comes back up and ends back up here at a y value of one. So in kind of comparing these two, let's look at our graph and figure out which one should we maybe use. I typically like using the cosine graph where it's easy to tell either maximums or minimum values um, where they are on the x-axis. But if I try this first maximum value, kind of drop a nice vertical line going down here, it doesn't look like it lines up with a nice integer. That second value, the minimum doesn't really either. It's like negative one point something. Um, maybe we'll get lucky here at our next maximum. Dropping it down though, eh, not, nothing super confident as far as using integer values. So because of that, I'm probably gonna go ahead and say we're not using the cosine function. Let's see if the sine function works out any better. So basically what you wanna do is maybe try to identify like in the middle of our graph going through here, do we have some of these points that are in the middle that maybe we could identify X values to go with them. All right, as I look through, that very first middle value looks to drop down and hit right about at negative nine, which is good. The next one, not so much clean, but maybe that's about a negative four. I'm not confident on that one though. What about that one drops down, looks like it's at one. I look to have moved a little bit closer to the origin than I wanted to as I was dropping down that nice vertical. Mm -hmm. Could work out pretty nicely. That one looks to be dropping down right at 11. So this has convinced me at least to use our sine graph um, with those integer values as opposed to the cosine graph. So I'm getting rid of the cosine. Let's use sine. All right, next up, we've got a journey ahead of us, right? We have a times sine of b, and then on the inside also here are the quantity x minus c with a plus d outside. So we've got to find A, B, C, and D to get the entirety of our graph, but it really isn't that bad. So let's kind of go through these one at a time. A, what you want to think of this as meaning is it has to do with the amplitude of our graph. Basically meaning from top to bottom, exactly how high do we go? And it works out to be half of that. Um, so I'm going to write it out as this. We're going to have half of the highest y value minus the lowest y value. And I'm really trying to take my time as I go through all these steps. The highest y value looks to be up here at eight. The lowest y value looks to be down here at zero. So we're gonna do one half of eight minus zero, which is half of eight, which works out to be four. And that's our value for a. So kind of filling in as we go, we start out and we have four times sine of b x minus c with a plus d hanging out here at the end. All right, so one out of four done. Besides, we already picked out sine, which is a good step in the right direction as well. All right, next up, let's think about what is b gonna be? All right, what b has to do with is the period. It's not the period itself, but it has to do with the period. So to calculate the period on a graph, what we do is we start with the original period. And then we're gonna divide that by whatever b works out to be. All right, so the original period for sine graph would be two pi, before it starts repeating itself, over b. All right, so in our case, what we want to do is calculate what is the period for one time through our graph. I think the easiest places to go are maybe on the right-hand side. You could definitely use the left-hand side. All right, but if I drop down a nice vertical here from this point, it works out to be one as an X value. 
So think of this as starting our sine graph. Go starts in the middle, goes up, comes back down, and ends back here in the middle, it looks like at 11. All right, so 11 minus one makes this 10 units before it starts repeating itself. So we'd say its period is 10 for the graph that we are given. All right, so we don't know what B is quite yet, but let's go ahead and solve this down. We wanna solve for B. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by B. On the left-hand side, this will eliminate the B and we'll be left with two pi. On the right-hand side, we currently have 10 times B. To get B by itself, we'll divide both sides by 10. Quick reducing down and we're gonna get B is pi over five. All right, so now as we build up our function, we now have what, four sine of pi over five, and then inside our parentheses, x minus c, with a plus d hanging out at the end. All right, next, let's think about c. All right, c is gonna represent a horizontal shift. All right, in our case, that starting point that we already identified, right here, right here in the middle, which was at one four, let's focus on that, because in the original sine graph, we would have started at the y-axis, but our starting value has been moved to the right one unit. All right, so because we moved everything to the right one unit, Um, that's going to tell us that C is going to be 1, positive 1 in our case. And let's think about this as we put this together. We have 4 times sine of pi over 5, and then x minus 1, 1's replacing the C in this case, uh, plus D at the end. Sorry, I put a C. It's supposed to be plus D at the end. All right. Because we're subtracting a one directly from x, that's gonna be a movement towards the right. Um, if you wanted everything to be shifted to the left, which our graph doesn't, but if you needed that, you would be adding the value directly to x, where, that, where I put the one. All right, last component here is d. All right, d has to deal with a vertical shift. All right, sometimes we call this the midline. All right, so we're trying to figure out what line, a horizontal line cuts this graph directly in half. All right, so to do that, what we do is we take the average of the highest um, and the lowest values. and that's y values that we're focused on. All right, so remember for a, the amplitude, we already calculated the highest y value is eight and the lowest y value is gonna be zero. So we have to take their average to get d. So d is gonna be, you take eight plus zero and divide it by two because we had two values there. So that's eight divided by two also works out to be four. And that is where our midline is gonna be. Looking up here at the graph, if we were to draw a horizontal line right through there at y equals four. Hopefully that looks like it's cutting the graph directly in half. There's half the graph above that midline and half the graph below that midline. So that's our value for D. So final answer here, our function is gonna be four times sine of pi over five, and then inside our parentheses, x minus one, and then D, that value plus four that we just found, and that will produce this exact graph that we were given from the beginning. All right, not an easy process. Um, so make sure you practice this. Be confident about how to get each and every one of these four components to create our function. All right, good luck with it.